G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Now, today's video is going to be a basic beginner's how to do some shrubs and bushes, all right? And that's the size of the canvas I'm just using. This was a something I was sorting out on a paper canvas the other day, but I'm gonna use this in this demonstration. And up there's just the colours we're using for those who want to know what colours we're using in this demonstration, all right? So it's going to be a very basic, easy, simple video for you beginners to learn and follow along. Now you might have a ground colour already on your canvas or on your painting and you want to add these trees or shrubs, whatever. But we've got nothing there. I'm going to go over the water with this one here. So I'm just using a black gesso. It's virtually like a... Um, flat black paint, which is good for putting the background. Now I'm gonna use a brush, come over here. And you can use your brush this way or that way. This is quite a stubborn haired brush. I call them a scratchy brush. So I'll get it against the edge without tape and you bring it up and I'm getting that edge nice and tight. If I was going this way, it'll start breaking and getting all crooked. I have more control and if you're a basic, normal human being, you'll have more control doing it this way. Bring it up on its edge, okay? But this is just a demo. It's not a full, beautiful, lovely painting we're gonna to do today. So you've just got the top done, and then we'll fill this in with the black gesso. You can use black paint, just something. Okay. I'm not using a soft brush. This one's quite firm so it's pushing that bright paint across. All right, and we'll just brush the strokes out of there. Now, that has to be dried. Okay, now down on my palette, we're gonna start putting our ground colors in there. So I'm gonna mix this up and it'll be sort of sand and rock and then some greenery growing over it. Just a good basis for our shrubs and bushes. So I've got raw umber, I've got me white, and I've got yellow oxide. So I wanna start with the raw umber, which is quite dark. It's not gonna show up on there. So I'm getting a bit of white and I'm putting into that because I wanna the main basis of this ground is the raw umber. So the distant area will be this color here, which has got the atmosphere in front of it. All right, and I'm using this brush because it's gonna be quite firm and direct. So we'll get, I've got my brush on, all right? And I've got it on its edge to get a sharp line. Now I'm gonna come across and let it go like that and then I'm gonna bring it in. And I wanna bring, now come back on this side. I've got my brush on. You can put tape there if you like. I should have put tape there for you beginners. Come across. See, I'm leaving some darks there, okay? And we've just sort of speared it in with each other that way. See how easy that was? With the brush on its edge like this, not like that. And we're just spearing it in, okay? And we've got some, we've left some dark areas, not too much because it's way in the distance. We've left some dark areas there. All right, now we're going to clean that brush. Oh, we probably don't have to because we're using the same raw umber. So I'm going to wipe that on a paper towel. Now I'm going to pick up the raw umber on its own on that brush and pick up some yellow oxide and put with it, okay? It'll just lighten it a bit at a darker value than the back distance area. And then we're gonna bring the foreground in. So about there, spearing it in, doing the same thing. Leaving some darks there, okay? Getting that like that. And I'm wearing the paint off this brush now, keeping it long strokes. All right, next color, I'm grabbing some burnt sienna. This will bring our browns into that. 
Now see here, I want to sort of feather this and bring this as the foreground colour. So bits in there, bits in, and then start bringing it to the foreground colour, okay? Wipe your brush. See how I've just speared them in there? I've wiped the brush and I want to scratch that through. Scratch it through, there we go. Now let's pick up some of our yellow oxide. We'll just wipe the brush. Yellow oxide, we'll get some highlights into here. Like that. Into these colours here. It's going to change those forward ground ones, which is what I wanted to happen. Bit more. And then I'll bring the brush on its edge. Well, I don't want to kill too much of the blacks or the darker colours. There we go. This has got no retarder in it, it's just all on its own. Wipe the brush, get some of the white, and then just come across and find some areas you can just dance some white areas on. That's plenty. Wipe your brush. The brush is still full of whatever paint's in it. And we're just gonna scratch them into all that ground cover there. All right. Don't want it too bright. See, I'm scratching a lot of this down to get it darker. It's not white white, otherwise it's gonna look wrong. And if you think there's too much light in it, grab some dark, like I think here, and sink it back a bit. It's that easy. Painting is all. There we go. And we're ready to put some more ground cover on there. Now this is dry. We're going to add our ground cover on there. I've got forest green, sap green, and yellow green, and some white. So they're going to be our ground covers. First, I'll start with the sap green. Sorry, I'll start with the forest green. Now I'm getting it onto this brush because it's a nice. See what it's doing? It's a nice scratchy brush. So we'll get this over, leaving some of the dark underneath it as a shadow. This is just tracing through all bits of this rock sandy surface area, wherever it may be. Just like that. It's just sort of scattered through. So we've just stabbed that on there. So there's broken up bits in between it. All right. Now back down here, I've dried that color. I'm grabbing a little bit of white and putting with the sap green. Okay, just to get it a little bit lighter than that forest green. Not too much. Don't want it too white. So this is all dried. I'm going to work from the top down, leaving some of the dark there. Dab it. See, I'm leaving the darks underneath it. This is just simple, basic. Leaving some of the darks in the middle as well. It's very minimal difference in the green, but this will be highlighted with our yellow green. Okay. All right, I've dried up there on a the canvas. Now I'm going to grab the yellow green. Now I'm using a flat brush. It's a flathead brush or a bright, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to bring my very sharp lights over dark areas. And I'm also going to use the other one. But see here, I want this really nice and fine over there laying in the land. Now this is all light. Just very lightly touch it very lightly don't be too heavy and put a big ugly blob there practice your like i was telling my son there's just so many things you can learn how to treat your brushes how to clean them how to just everything there's just it's endless see i put that there to create the very fine edge of it 
and probably can bring some over the shadow there just sort of like that probably bring a vein out here but not killing all the darks it's important not to kill the dark see what we've done there now I'm grabbing this other brush that I used. I'll put a bit of water on it and wipe it and bring this bring this up because it's a scratchy hard see how hard it is it's not soft so now we want to get just the tops and come over these shrubs that we've put there with this very lightly find out how the paint's coming off your brush start off the canvas yep and bring it on well see that's a big blob but i've got a way to fix that up kill all that darker color greens within that otherwise it's gonna ruin the look now see we've got too much of that yellow green on there I'm gonna come back with the forest green and sink it back while it's wet because it'll help sort of merge it a bit better see what we've done there where those blobs were that I didn't quite like Just get them back there like that because we've killed it too much see even i make mistakes but i'm just pushing the lights back with a darker color again okay and that's pretty much it <laughs> I've sunken all those bright colors back with the green and now I'm just evening up the green again the yellow green okay so that'll be our ground cover just scattered throughout this rocky sandy area all right now we'll just do some basic basic shrubs but we've got to dry this first all right that's dry now we're going to add some shrubs now with your shrubs find some brushes I've got, this is one of my favorite brushes. See how the ends all open and fairy and fanned and feathered? And these little scratchy brushes, these are the types you get from your art shops, okay? There's those ones. And I also have a smaller one as well. So down on the palette here, I've just got that black gesso again, which is virtually a flat black, and I'm pumping up the brush I'm going to use for certain shrubs so I'm going to use a little one and I'll probably put something way out here in the distance just some small along the line that you want the bottom of it flat see I've done that flat and put some shrubs there just any other way. don't think about it just do them you can come down in your picture and then get the tops nice and fanned out and opened like that okay flatten the bottom out flatten the bottom out there's some distance ones all right maybe just see how i bought them i'm not putting them all along the top there like a uniform pattern and we'll probably put one down here it's not and then flatten the bottom out like so okay that's it now we'll bring some forward ones in using a different brush. Let's try the one of these brushes. So we'll probably use this area here somewhere, not on here, we'll use this area right in the middle there. Okay, so that'll be the bottom. So we'll just put this one about there, just like that. Try and flatten out his bottom like that. And if you wanna give him a little friend that keeps him company all day, you can. That's it. That's our middle one. Now we'll pick up this one, which is a bigger brush. We're gonna, and we'll probably do something, or maybe here, big thing. It can go over that a little bit, pick up more paint. 
you want the outer edge opened, not solid, because it's just creating the shadow in these bushes. So you've virtually got a couple of little bushes there, but in the foreground, and we could probably put another one, let's say about here, from there, and I want to bring him up somewhere there. Okay, so you're dabbing it on. Practice this, dab it on, get those edges nice and open these edges here get them nice and open if you squint your eyes you can sort of see what you're getting up to on your canvas all right and we'll just play with that till it's right now i'm using my small brush again to do the distant small one so the same brush you use you're going to use again now i'm going to i've got my forest my yellow and my white now i'm just going to do these little ones first with this little brush but i don't want them all the same color as this and this we've got to break it up so we're just going to use the yellow green for them on my brush, opening the ends out. See how I'm getting the ends of that brush opened out? Get the thick paint there. And because I'm right handed, I like to work from the left to the right. So we'll do this one here. We're going to go just beyond the dark colour. Down, leave that shadow there underneath it, okay? Don't kill that shadow underneath it. All right, we'll do these ones here. And it's just creating little bushes in the distance. Get the very top, the very top. How's that looking in the monitor? That's looking okay. Now, just wipe your brush and we're grabbing some white for that yellow green. Okay, this is just going to be the highlight for those distance ones. And that's got to be dry. Before I highlight that, I just want the minimal, this is just adding detail, very little skinny script liner, and I'm just adding some trunks. The trunks need to go within the bottom shadow, coming out of the bottom shadow and up into the bush. Okay, just something to give it a bit more finesse. And then the highlights will sink these trunks back. So we have the same brush. This has all been dried. The same brush we used for the green there. Now we're going to highlight it. Not too much. And this highlight is virtually the colour of the tree. Now see those two little trunks there? Can you see them? I want to get just... That's why I'm using a little brush, Reese, when you asked earlier. And probably a bit over the shadow there like that. And that's like a conifer way out there in the distance. Same here. Just sink all that back over the branches. Sink the branches back. That way that doesn't look like your trunks are floating on top of a shrub. This is the basics on doing a decent shrub. I'm picking up some of the forest green because I just want to show you like here. You might do this at home. See how this one's very bright? where you think the bright ones are, squint your eyes up and just sort of sink it back with some darker again. See what that done? It sunk it back. Okay. We want to Get that green in there. Create layers of the bush branches and over this side here like that. That's pretty much what I want. All right, see that? That looks like a, a bush. Now, it, it's very it's very green, green. See, but the black has given it depth and you want the green to come beyond the black. Otherwise, you're gonna have a weird black thing there. Now, I haven't washed my brush. I'm just going to wipe it on a rag and pick up the yellow green like that and mix it with that forest green. But before we do, I almost forgot a bit of a shrubbery trunks in there. Just straight little lines. Don't go all weird and bendy. They're just these are just shrubs. Just something like that. Okay. And we're going to sink them back with the highlight. Uh, that's dry. We'll get this highlighter now. Sink those trunks back. 
some in the middle there, just like that, and a bit over these, but not killing all our black. How's that looking? See, that's fine. We've got the shadow underneath the tree, and we've got a basic tree. If you want to highlight that, I'm picking up the littlest bit of white. This is just a demo, and do not overkill it. Just the very edge, watch. Oh, lightly does it. It's, it's hitting the broader area. If you kill this bush with all this, you'll start ruining the picture. But you'll get an idea what I mean. See how it's just highlighted that? These ones are different. Now we'll come to these front ones here. Now I've got my forest green here. That'll be the basis of the tree. Probably kill it with a bit of yellow green. I want that to be the dark colour, but I want it to be light enough. And there's my brush, all fared out with the paint on there, so I want it to be nice and airy. So there's my black edge. I want to go a bit beyond it. Use whatever brush you feel. Wow, I love the way that brush is working for me. That's what you want to use, okay? And find your little areas in your bush, like so. Now look at that in the monitor, Reese. We're just looking at that one in the monitor. It looks like a nice shrub. But that's the same way you can look at it. You're squinting your eyes. You're leaving bits of black in there. When you're driving down the road, look at trees and you see all this behavior happening in the trees. This won't have too much highlight on it. Yeah, when you squint your eyes, you can really see the depth of it, eh? Yeah, that's it. Now, not cleaning the brush, I'll just pick up some white. It's gonna change the value of that. And we'll highlight this. But well, what did I forgot to do? I forgot to draw it. I don't I don't want to do too many highlights on this. I just see I'm very carefully touching it. And I wanted this green different to that green. But you can see what's happening in the painting there. Reese is just looking at the monitor, so he's getting a squinted eye view of what this is looking like. Now these ones I'm not going to put the trunks in like I have here. In this tutorial, because it's like showing you how to do certain things, you get an idea what they look like with or without. So within your paintings and your habits, you can either do them with the trunks or without. Okay. I'm just looking in the monitor. That's looking reasonably treesh. This bit's all in front of there. I'm happy with that. How's that looking? I want to sort of fill in the bottom a bit. That's it. I don't want to over-white it. Okay, for Reese and you out there, we're going to use Van Dyke Brown, yellow oxide, and a white. Now, for beginners, a flat, bright brush, or a flat-headed brush like this, they are more easy and manageable than a knife. Okay? So we'll start off with our black. We've got to get some black as well. Let's just grab this. Here. And let's see now, you are, I, I want a sort of a speared up rocky rock, so it's sort of going to come up there and into the ground. Okay, and it's like that, and it's going to fan down into the ground. It's in, in, in front of those ground cover greens there. How's that looking? Flatten it out at the bottom, it's just a basic rock. And we'll dry that. Okay, now we've got the layout of a simple basic rock there. I'm grabbing a pointy knife and we'll come down to the first dark colour, which is the Van Dyke Brown. So we're going to get that onto the knife like so. And I can put it on in a way to scratch it in and leave some dark bits. So these you've got to practice, all right? So I'm going to get the edge on there. See, that's what I wanted, that edge. Down there like that. And now I'm lightly leaving open bits in it. And look at that, it's just... I'm using the tip of the knife to push it where I want, sort of here and there. And that's it. That, why we're using a knife for the second and third bit is because it's going to allow it to sort of mix and scratch and look naturey. So there's that colour. And now pick up your yellow oxide the same way. And they're going to kind of marble up. So be careful. Get, light's always on the edge there. Don't overdo it. That's it, that'll do. Okay, it's a very bright rock. So we can tone that down with some more of the 
Van Dyke Brown, let's just kill some of that back. Okay. Now we'll grab the white on the knife and we just want to dance like the, the the, the sun is hitting the top of the rock, the very edges, so at least get the edges highlighted first, like so, just like that. And then we just want to pan this across those two browns and yellow oxide, just like that. Now what I do, I get a script liner and put some little black marks in there. Let's see if I can just... Try and get a bit of white over that, or it's too much. Yeah. That'll do for our rock. Get yourself a script liner and wiggle it into some black and get it really quite wet like that, okay? Twist it off the brush, twist your brush through it. And I'll just let nature take its course with this. And I'm coming from the edge and I'm just wiggling just some detailed into the black. I'm just wiggling some detailed um, shadow into this rock here, okay? I just let it take its own course. Wash your brush, load it back up with some more black paint. Is it picking that up, Reese? Yeah. And it might pay if that rock was dry. Mine's wet at the moment. But if it was dry, and you know, you got crevices within that paint, you can find little shadowy areas and just shadow them in. There we go. Get that black distinctive in there so you can pick it up. How's that looking on the monitor? Yeah, that, that'll do. That's a basic rock. And you can, if you want, put some ground cover in front of it. Okay, so we'll just take this tape off here. So we've turned virtually an ocean scene into a bit of a rocky outback crappie scene, okay? There we go, that's not too shabby. So we've done some shrubs and bushes, and a rock of course, some ground cover. So some have got the trunks in them, some don't, and they're all different values in colour, okay? That's not too shabby, eh? All right, I hope you like these hints and tips in this little video here, um, and it helps you out in uh, some simple and basic problems that you might have hitting your canvas, all right? If you like what I do, you tell a friend, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck. Good on ya!